عطقوها أمي فلسطين لا تدوزوها عطقوها أمي فلسطين لا تدوزوها دركوها جنة الخلد لا تفوتوها عطقوها أمي فلسطين لا تدوزوها دركوها جنة الخلد لا تفوتوها حبوها كيف الحياة كاملة جعلوها My feeling is that we have to set goals which are realistic. And people act now as if the whole problem with Israel is it's a Zionist state, a Jewish state, and it's not a secular state like South Africa. But I think people forget, okay, South Africa got rid of apartheid. But if you talk to knowledgeable South Africans, they'll tell you, as John Dugard told me last week when I spoke to him, he said for the average South African black, it's now worse than it was under apartheid. The fact that you eliminated systems of discrimination, legal discrimination, does not mean you've reached utopia and everything is now perfect. And I have trouble with people focusing relentlessly on this issue that Israel is a Jewish state as if, if you abolish that, everything is going to be fine there. Okay, you abolished it in South Africa. Is everything fine now? No. In my opinion, the first goal ought to be end the occupation. We have a real, op we have a real possibility for succeeding at that. You don't like apartheid, you don't like Zionism. Okay, I don't like discriminatory states either. But we have to be honest about these things. Do we like despotic states, as they are in all of the Middle East? Do we like police states, as they are in all of the Middle East? Why are people just focusing now on this Zionism and Israel thing, as if abolishing it is going to solve all the problems, or as if it's worse than Egypt, Saudi Arabia, any of the other countries in the Middle East. They're all terrible. No? I just, I think people, they're completely losing sight of reality. The occupation, there is a consensus in the world community, it's wrong. It has to be, it has to end. Let's focus on that. And not, you know, start raising the issue of Israel itself being an apartheid state. Okay, I don't agree with it, but let's, for argument's sake, I'll grant it. Israel is an apartheid, you know, pre-67 Israel is an apartheid state. But good God, what is Egypt? It's a police state, a torture state. What is Jordan? A police state, a, a torture state. What are all of those states? police states and torture states. Why are we focused on Israel? I don't get that. It doesn't make sense to me. The issue of one state and two states now, no? The same issue? Then do you think it's an issue now, for instance? I don't, there's no, there's no support out there for one state. What are you going to do now? Create a whole new international consensus I don't know where people are coming up with this from. She wants to boycott Tel Aviv University. Why just Hebrew University? We'll never win because there's no focus. You know, you have to, I said, if I can quote myself, keep your eyes on the prize. Remember why we're doing it. 
You know, it was supposed to be there was this terrible occupation, which we wanted to end. And now people have completely forgotten why we're doing it, you know. And the people are all over the place now. You know. It can't be one this way. You have to have a fixed goal and work towards it. It's very frustrating. Because it's new generations of people. I'm probably the only oldest one here. It's new generations of people who don't know the past. And we, we just keep on reinventing it over and over again because there's no institutional continuity. If there were institutional continuity, there'd be an older generation telling the younger generation, this is what happened before. And we don't want to do it all over again. You know, we don't want to go back there. But because there's no institutional continuity, each new generation starts from the beginning. And uh, not, there's no progress. There's no progress. We should not be having these debates, no. We should have a fixed goal, you know, after 40 years, at least a fixed goal, yeah. what we want. And work towards it. Keep your eyes on the prize. Remember what we want. Why don't you we call Tel Aviv University? Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> it's hopeless. It's hopeless. How, for instance, like, uh, because you say this morning, like, like if Israel was destroyed as a country, I'm like not you for are, that. Yeah, like you asked in the, in the American Jews, you know, like, no, I mean, like, 50 something percent, they weren't affected. Are I mean, younger I'm, American Jews, yeah. under 40. Yeah, under 40, but I'm living in Jerusalem, for instance, and it's full of American Jews coming there, you know, mm -hmm. they're really, like, into Israel, you know, so I was surprised because... Yeah, but the poll results are very surprising, because we tend to see only the active ones, the active pro-Israeli ones, but there's a huge community yeah. which has lost interest, because basically my opinion is they're embarrassed. Israel is an embarrassment, you know? You can't be proud of that state. Every day a corruption scandal, every day they're bombing someone, killing somebody. The whole world says, great, according to the U.S. intelligence report, Iran is not making nuclear weapons. The only country in the world which doesn't like that report is Israel. Oh no, they are making nuclear weapons, we have to bomb them. You know, who wants to be associated with a country like that? They're nuts. You know, to give war a chance and another chance and another chance. This is not a normal country. And American Jews, you know, they tend to be liberal there. There's no ethnic group in the United States except for African Americans, which is so pro-Obama. It's 75% of American Jews. is nowhere anywhere near that of any ethnic, because they're liberal. You know, so uh, you could see they're drifting away, because it's impossible to defend it anymore. 